good evening everyone greetings to you all in the most matchless name of our lord and savior jesus christ on behalf of reverend dr wilson paul uris gurisishya we welcome you all for this sunday evening community worship service please note that the worship elements of today's community worship service have been taken from tamil literature tirukural tiruval moli and rabindranath tagore's geeta anjali what has learning profited a person if it has not led the person to worship the good feet of god who is pure knowledge itself the supreme dwells within the lotus of the heart those who reach god's splendid feet dwell enduringly within unearthly realms draw near the feet of god who is free of desire and aversion and live forever free of suffering good and bad delusions dual deeds do not disturb those who delight in praising the immutable worshipful one let us all say to together the opening prayer day after day o lord of my life shall i stand before thee face to face with folded hands o lord of all worlds shall i stand before thee face to face and at the great sky in solitude and silence with humble heart shall i stand before thee face to face in this laborious world of time tumultuous with toil and with struggle among hurrying crowds shall i stand thee before thee face to face and when my work shall be done in this world o lord of lords alone and speechless shall i stand before thee face to face amen remain seated now i invite telugu friends to lead us in opening song with telugu bhajan
possesses the highest answer un, answer unt unsurpassable goodness who who guides through the confusion and graces the mind with goodness 
who is the overlord of the immortals who never forget let us all say together oh my mind and my soul at god luminous feet that cut through affliction bow down and arise now we'll have action song from sunday school children scripture reading is taken from acts 2 chapter 2 verse 42 to 47 they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and fellowship to the breaking of the bread and prayers all came upon them because many wonders and signs were being upon every one because many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles all who believed were together and had all things in common they would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as they had need day by day as they spent much time together in the temple they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts praising god and having the good will of all the people and day by day the lord added to their number those who were being saved
Good evening, friends. Want to welcome each one of you once again this evening for the worship service. And I want to thank uh, the principal and the administration for giving me this opportunity to uh, be the chaplain and uh, uh, trusting in me so that I'll be able to carry forward my responsibilities. Want to thank all my colleagues and all the students for your strong support throughout the year from the very beginning till now and uh, seeking your support in the days to come as well. A special thanks uh, to my K group friends. Uh, we are a Guru Shishya uh, friends. Uh, our Guru Shishya is very special. In our Guru Shishya, we don't have any women student. Uh, so that is to say that uh, all are there with us, uh, all the women students are there with us to help us, you know, uh, whenever we have worship or other activities. Uh, we are small in number also, I think, uh, uh, but uh, we thank God that uh, we have a wonderful group and they have worked very hard and prepared for this evening worship service. want to thank... Uh, the media, GLTC media and team under the leadership of uh, Dr. Samuel Sondaratsa and uh, for helping us to have the live streaming and display on the screen. Shall we pray as we hear from God's word? Our gracious Lord, we thank you. This evening we can come in your presence with an open heart to praise and worship you, to meditate from your word, and to be blessed. As we sit in your presence, O oh Lord, speak to us. Here we are. Help us that we will receive your word, store it in our hearts, and live according to your word, so that our lives will be a great blessing for others. Bless us as we meditate upon your word. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. We have just read the scripture portion, Acts chapter 2, verses uh, 42 to 47, has been read before us. This um, text actually talks about togetherness. And therefore, the theme that I have selected for today's meditation is intentionality in togetherness and act of embracing diversity, intentionality in togetherness, being intentional in being together, which is an act of embracing others is the theme. I have heard somebody say, getting together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress and working together is success. Getting together is a beginning. Whenever we get together, there is a beginning of something wonderful, something beautiful, and something good. Keeping together is progress. That is a challenge. Keeping together, walking together, moving forward together is a challenge. But that shows the progress. Working together is a success. When we join hands together, when we work together, fulfill the responsibility given to us, we are sure to see the blessings of God and its success in all that we do. And it seems that the early church had understood the secret of togetherness and embraced each other on the way. When we look at verse 42, uh, verse 45, in fact, it says, uh, verse 44 says, all who believed were together, Acts chapter 2, verse 44, all who believed were together, and had all things in common. All who believed were together. They understood what togetherness all means and what togetherness can do in each of our lives. There were two men who were standing on a bridge and one of them was about to jump off the bridge and the other one was trying to stop him by talking to him. So the man who was trying to stop the other person who was about to jump from the bridge asked that jumper, are you a Christian or a Hindu or a Jew or what? So the jumper who was about to jump said, I'm a Christian. 
the man said oh the world is so small me too i am also a christian are you a protestant or a catholic or an orthodox the jumper said i am a protestant the man replied me too i am also a protestant what is the denomination that you belong to the jumper said i am from a baptist denomination the man was all the more happy he said i am also a baptist but are you a southern baptist or a northern baptist so the jumper said i am a northern baptist the man was again very happy delighted he said yeah me too i am also a northern baptist but i have another question that whether northern conservative baptist or you are a northern liberal baptist so the man said i am a northern conservative baptist so the man replied oh me too i am also a northern conservative baptist but i have another question we look you know very similar we are from the same tradition so he said are you from northern conservative baptist great lakes region or eastern region so this jumper said i am from the north conservative baptist great lake region oh he said oh i am also from that same tradition now again he had the last question to ask he said now you tell me are you from northern conservative baptist great lake region council of 1879 or council of 1912 the man said i am from northern conservative baptist great lake region council of 1912 by hearing this the man got angry he pushed him and he said you better die you heretic now this is not what it means to be intentionally intentionally um, together it doesn't talk about in intentionality in togetherness but this talks about divisiveness and hostility although often we you know talk about being together as a family as a community as a church or as a fellowship the fact is that we are often limited in our own world that we have created around us in our selfishness and pride we don't appreciate or learn from the shared experiences the valuable opportunities to be together as a family and community we most of the time forget the fact that only together by being together we are better only by being together we are better the scripture illustrates how passionately god uh, you know uh, brings us together by breaking all the barriers by breaking all the walls of hostility or separation between us to the point of sacrificing and going to great length to bring people together into a relationship with him if you read ephesians chapter 2 verse 14 and 16 if you have your bibles with me please turn to ephesians chapter 2 verse 14 and 16 it says for christ is our peace in his flesh he has made jews and gentiles into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is hostility between us the scripture says god has broken down the walls the walls of hostility between us he reconciled both groups to god in one body through the cross thus putting to death that hostility through it our lord jesus christ on the cross gave his life and he broke the wall of hostility so that we can have a healthy relationship with one another the hostility division has been put to death the word of god says god put the hostility to death and it has been put to death by god's love in new testament we see that the believers were compelled by god's this love and the desire to be with them they understood that they were better together deeply connected through sharing conviction passion for god's purpose and a deep love for each other that changed not only their lives but the world around them if you look at once again the text that is read before us verses 42 to 47 suggests that 
the early church was learning fellowshipping praying offered power demonstrating radically generous consistent glad praise filled and the growing body of jesus as believer what beautiful adjectives and the qualities of a church that we see here who doesn't long to be part of such church or fellowship i'm sure that all of us as we read these verses would like to be part of such fellowship such community where there is power, people are filled with power there is a loving fellowship there is learning prayer we are all filled there are people who are radically generous all these qualities we want to see in our church in our community in our fellowship but when we look at these qualities it also reminds us that it looks too ideal or too good to be true this text has been a problematic church a uh, problematic text throughout the church history many simply deny that the words we read or we read just now are true that this description of the early church is accurate at all many of them they would deny that they would not agree with that they would say that this is something kind of an utopian uh, kind of romantic vision which is not true which cannot be true it is too ideal to be good how can a church be like this with all these qualities there was a writer his name is uh, harold bloom in his book the american religion he says that this vision of the early church is just a romantic vision and then he goes on to uh, go, goes on to say that such church never existed you know as we as it is been presented here in the scripture this utopian vision we find in acts chapter 2 verses 42 to 47 can in fact create a kind of despair among us when we look at the church today in different parts of the world when we compare our church our fellowship when we look at the churches around us and then we look at the text we may be in despair we may be discouraged we may be disappointed another author tim catkin in his book the permanent revolution writes now i had not grown up in the church i have not grown up in the church at 16 when i was 16 years old i picked up the bible read it cover to cover and became a christian i was under the impression that what i have read in the gospels and in the book of acts was how the church actually functions it was a bit jarring to walk into the local church for the first time and see that it was only a shadow of what i had read in the scripture disappointment when we look at the church out there there is a kind of disappointment there is an ideal church the early church being presented to us but it is nowhere to be found today is the despair that many feel this could be a understandable reaction but my dear children of god luke here is not providing this description of the early church to despair he is not providing he is not telling us about these qualities of the early church to disappoint us on the contrary luke here is trying to make us understand what the church can be when it yields itself to purity conviction and togetherness if only a church is willing to surrender to purity conviction and togetherness the church could be exactly what luke describes here to be my dear children of god togetherness is essential for our faith to grow and relationships to thrive we can deepen our relationships and have the spiritual impact today that the first church 
had by redefining and rethinking what togetherness truly is. I just want to share a couple of things about togetherness that is taken from the scripture. Togetherness is about conviction. Togetherness is about conviction. Second Corinthians chapter 12, 2 verse 12 and 13 reads like this. When I come, when I came to Troas to proclaim the good news of Christ, a door was opened for me in the Lord, but my mind could not rest because I did not find my brother Titus there. So I said farewell to them and went to the Macedonia to look for him. Paul says his heart was troubled when he did not see his brother, his companion Titus there. And then he says that though the doors were open for me, the great doors were open for the spiritual work for Paul. Paul says that I didn't stay there. I just said goodbye. And I went back to Macedonia looking for my dear brother Titus. What a wonderful conviction. His conviction about how much relationships matter to him is revealed here. Rather than conveniently moving forward without Titus, Paul's conviction to prioritize togetherness led him to pursue Titus while leaving the opportunity behind. My dear friends, we can imagine how inconvenient this may, may have been for the Paul. However, from the rest of Paul's life experience and examples in 2 Corinthians, we can learn how God moved powerfully through Paul and his relationship to change the lives of many. For Paul, relationships matter. For God, relationships matter matter. We need to ask this question to ourselves. Do we prioritize building spiritual relationships above pursuing personal interests? Do we prioritize building spiritual relationships above pursuing personal interests? Secondly, we learn from the scripture Togetherness is about vulnerability. Togetherness is about vulnerability. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verses 11 to 13 reads like this. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours in return. I speak as to children, open wide your hearts also. Paul says, we have been vulnerable before us. We have opened and poured out our heart in front of you. But somewhere it looks like you are restricting yourself. And there is a suggestion here that Paul gives. And he says, open wide your hearts also. Paul is expressing his vulnerability here and encourages believers to do the same. When we come together, when we fellowship together, when we live as a community together, we have to express our vulnerability. Vulnerability is essential to build togetherness. The willingness to be completely unguarded influenced, raw, and risking hurt. Sometimes we may have to risk hurt. When we come closer to the people, people may hurt us. But that is what togetherness means. Although spending time together does create togetherness, it is the vulnerability that cements our connection with each other. It is vulnerability that cements our conviction and our connection with each other. By being vulnerable, we are connected with one another. By showing, displaying our weaknesses, our helplessness, 
our vulnerability receiving the encouragement from others we are bonded together we are cemented together my dear friends let us ask ourselves what excuse or rationalization is keeping us from being vulnerable in relationships we come up with so many excuses not to fellowship with others not to be with somebody we bring lot of rationalization in our discussion how to seclude ourselves how to remain away how to stay away are there such kind of excuses rationalization that is keeping us from being vulnerable in our relationship finally our intentionality in togetherness ultimately moves god my dear friends when we come together in conviction when we come together well with all of our vulnerability god moves god moves when we show our intentions to be together in matthew chapter 18 verse 19 it says truly i tell you if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask it will be done for you for my father in heaven when we come together god moves our prayers become empowered and so god says whoever whenever you come together and agree on earth about anything you ask it will be done for you by my father in heaven just as vocalists together move as emotionally in the same way praying together in unity moves god and unleashes god's power in our lives when is the last we have prayed like this when is the last that we have come together and in our intentionality in togetherness we were empowered as we prayed together as a community we need to grow together in praying interceding spending time together calling upon the name of god we also see that in our intentionality when we come together our resilience grows stronger our resilience grows stronger i want to read ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 to 12 where it says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil for if they fall one will lift up the other but woe to one who is alone and falls and does not have another to help and though one might prevail against another two will withstand one a threefold cord is not quickly broken what a beautiful verse my dear friends the word of god reminds us that two are better than one so that when one falls there is another to lift that one up and build that one up how many times in the scripture how many times in the new testament we have heard a lord jesus christ encouraging us to carry one another's burden to carry each other to encourage one another in faith the word of god says those who are strong in faith build those who are weak in faith so that at the end all of us are found together when our lord jesus christ comes to receive us the power of two working together can overcome far more than just one alone I'm reminded about a huge redwood trees in california which are considered to be the largest living things on earth and the tallest trees in the world some of them are over 300 feet high and over 2500 years old no one would think that tree so large would have a tremendous root system reaching down hundreds of feet into the earth when we look at these trees we may get this picture however the redwoods actually have a very shallow system of roots 
So how do they get so big and stand so strong? The secret is, although it has a shallow root system, they are intertwined. They are locked to each other. So when the storms come and the winds blow, the redwood trees stand and they do not fall. It is because they don't stand alone for all the trees support and protect each other. What a beautiful example for us as people of God. The roots of these trees are intertwined. They are locked to each other. Never to be separated. Giving strength to one another. So that this tall tree would stand the wind, strong winds and storms. They stand together, supporting and protecting each other. My dear children of God, as a community, as people of God, we are called to stand together. The same is true for the community like ours and of the church. How do we stand strong and withstand the storms? By standing together, by working together, by being locked with each other. Let us examine ourselves. Are we a community like this? Are we intentionally making efforts and the in, with the intense sense of togetherness? Are we living here as a community to be a blessing to each other and the people around us? Galatians chapter 5 verse 25 and 26 says, If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. It says, let us not become conceited, competing against one another and envying one another. When we set aside self-interest, envy and pride, working together in step with each other, we then create the best form of community. Let us pray to God and may God help us that in our togetherness as a community, may our prayers be empowered. May our resilience grow stronger and may we learn to work together, keeping aside self-interest, envy and pride. Amen. Let us confess our sin in unison. Wicked people do not fear. Worthy people dread the arrogance of sinful beings. From a unison sport, more evil. To commit stones in the kingdom. As person said, as follows his footsteps. Where he goes. Even so, we are expecting pursue those who are the best to understand that to do which are not to be done will be done, and not to do that which ought to be done will also be done. Let those who wish to be free from afflictions, pain, avoid inflicting harm on others. If a person feels fond affection for himself, let him not indulge in immoral deeds, however insignificant. Know that a person will be defended against destruction if he does not deviate from the right and act iniquitously. Never desire deeds that do not benefit others. Those who are free from arrogance, anger, and lust will prosper in great dignity. May God give us strength. Amen. Now the offering will be collected and the special song will be sung by Angela.
pray for the offering. Dear God, we thank you for the blessed time that you've given us to come together, worship you, listen from your word and intercede for one another and our needs. We thank you for your manifold blessings 
and out of your blessings we have brought a small portion to be used for your work we pray for your blessings upon the offerings that have been collected and ask you to help us to use these gifts that have been given by your children in a wise way so that your name is glorified we ask this prayer in the precious name of lord and our savior jesus christ amen let us contemplate a kindness done in the hour of need may itself be small but in the worth of exceed the whole world when help is rendered by the being the receiver's need and not the donor's return reward it is goodness grow greater than the sea it is important to even forget but it's good to forget at once and enjoy it worthless are those who injure other vengefully while those who are stoically injure and like stored gold the gratification of the vengeful lasts only for a day but the glory of the forbearing lasts until the end of the time it is best to suffer and suffer the reign of the rich let the country for the poor parents those who are in the arguments have wronged us consider the heart that is free from all envy as virtuous conduct itself a person's own envy is for enough to forge his her reunion even though he she has no other enemies there is no envious person who have risen the prosperity there are no person free from envy who have fallen from it he she who understand is her duty to society truly lives all others shall be counted among their dead in the hands of an benevolent person wealth is like medicinal tree, whose healing gives help all the benevolent person considers himself herself poor only when he she is unable to render his help a constant service to humanity learn perfectly all that you learn and thereafter keep your contact worthy of that learning the deeper your sand well is dug the freer is it is flow of water even so the deeper your person learning the greater is her wisdom a person learning is a imperishable and precious wealth all other possessions are less than gold let us all stand and pray the closing prayer together this is my prayer to the my lord strike strike at the root of penury in my heart give me the strength lightly to bear my joys and sorrow give me the strength to make my love fruitful in service give me the strength never to disown the poor or bend my knees before insolent might give me the strength to raise my mind I about daily trifles and give me the strength to surrender my strength to your will with love amen virtue yields heaven's honor and earth's wealth what is there then that is more fruitful for a person be unremitting in the doing of good deeds do them with all your might and by every possible means keep the mind free of impurity that alone is the practice of virtue all else is nothing but an empty display may the triune god help us and be with us always amen once again want to thank all of you may we please be seated couple of announcements uh thank you for joining us uh, in this worship this evening 
uh, let us continue to pray for one another. I think uh, principal uh, is uh, traveling tomorrow. He'll be away from the campus. The, there's going to be GCC uh, meeting and he'll be attending that. And uh, Dr. Arvind also will be going there after tomorrow. So let us pray for our dear principal is travel and also for these meetings, very important meetings uh, that are going to take place. Let us pray uh, that God's blessings will be upon.